he's using ISIS. He's using uh, people that have lost their mind because the spirit of deaf and dumb has come on them in a deep way. Remember, there are seven levels of possession. Uh, the first, the first time you eat a piece of cake, that doesn't mean you bloom out and you become these last days. The book of Revelation, which we are living in, is the spirit of fear. Uh, the devil wants to scare people to be on his side. And the main people he's after are the Christians. He's already won his people. Those that believe that the number 666 is nothing. Those that believe that taking the chip is nothing. Those that believe that they can go to heaven without reading their Bible. Uh, nothing. I know God. Sure, so does the devil. Do you know him? Do you love him? Do you spend time with him? That's the difference between religion and relationship. The devil even knows the Bible verses. There's nothing wrong with memorizing the Word of God, but it's using it and how we use it that matters. The enemy counterfeits and copies everything that the Lord does in order to deceive. That's his job. He's had 12 disciples and Satan has 12 strong men. And these strong men are principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness that are meant to destroy good people's lives, to take the Christians and set them back to where they'll fall on the world's way of thinking instead of the Word of God. In this case, this particular strong man that we're talking about today, remember Jesus said you have to get rid of the strong man before you can get rid of the little demons. This one is the spirit of fear. And the greatest tactic in the last days, the devil's going to impart fear. If you don't get the chip, you won't be able to, to eat. Um, you won't be able to buy gas. You won't be able to do all those things. We're aware of it. So we Christians prepare in advance. Or we're prepared to die for the Lord. We're aware of it. It doesn't make us afraid. But to those that are on border, not sure if Christianity is true, not sure if taking the mark of the beast is the right thing to do, not sure if uh, you know anything about Christianity solid, never been trained that way, or even if they had a little bit of a little bit of it in college, uh, they don't know the depth of the um, magnitude of its of its necessary part of their life. It's vital for them to read their Holy Bible. Not the Koran. Not the Mormon Bible. Not the Jehovah Witness Bible. Not all these other Bibles out there. I'm talking King James Version, New King James Version, those that are the closest to the real thing. That's the ones I'm talking about. They don't have 288 verses taken out of it. They don't have their own precepts and concepts. There's nothing wrong with devotionals that go with your Bible. But God's Word of God, God's Word is what He wants you to read and study and spend time with every day. Every day. We eat every day. We can take a half an hour to sit down and eat. Why can't we take a half an hour and sit down and read our Bible? We take a half an hour to entertain ourselves, whether it's watching television or Internet. Why can't we take a half an hour and read our Bible? You know, years ago, I used to model for a company and uh, did did uh, beautiful dresses and jewelry and things like that, you know, and simple stuff. And, and I used to tell the Lord, you know, I just don't have time. I don't have time. Have you seen my schedule? I was very arrogant and very cocky and very greedy and very self-centered. Disgusting. And the gentle voice of the Holy Spirit said to me, you have toilet time. And immediately, mm -hmm. I set up my TV tray in the restroom and put my Bible and my devotional there. And I started out, that is what I would do in the morning. 
The Holy Spirit doesn't care. They're in the supernatural realm. They don't mind these natural things as long as you're spending time with the Lord. And it grew to where I set up a room and that was my room for God. That was my room where I met the Holy Spirit. That was my room where Jesus came in. That was my room where I prayed and I fasted. That was my room where I read the Word of God every morning, no matter what. It was so entrapped, just engulfing, just consuming. The Word of God is so consuming, it's so powerful. It changed my life completely. From being shy, insecure, couldn't even hold a sentence, never stand in front of people, couldn't make money, to everything changed. Everything changed. For the better. The things I just said became the opposite. Because the Holy Spirit stepped in and turned the light on. And when the lights turn on, the darkness dispels. Jesus Christ had 12 disciples. Satan has 12 strong men. Those strong men have thousands of demons underneath them that penetrate good people's lives, and they're after the gifts. The devil will never rob an empty warehouse. He will look inside and find gifts and try to steal those gifts on earth as it is in started in the heavenlies on earth if your son your daughter your husband your wife your family members your friends have gifts from the Lord it's the devil's job to steal them and attack their good lives and minds to turn from the Lord and serve him thinking that they're on their way to heaven it's time for deliverance Jesus said, go into all the world, lay hands on the sick, cast out demons. Those demons are the source and the root of your problem. Why deal with it when you can deliver it? The number one way the devil wants to get to people in these last days is the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 I want you to speak every day. I do not have the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. I do not have the spirit of fear of power of love and a sound mind. I do not have the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. And it will happen because this word does not return void, but accomplishes what you send it to do. You send it to do. God's already given it to you. Now you take it and work with it. 2 Timothy 1.7 I do not have the spirit of fear, but the power of love is on mine. Don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers also.